Good morning. 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 Akong basahon sa translation ni Dr. Isidro. This is Sibuano uh, version direct from Greek. Hebrews, Hebrewano 2, 1 at 4. Hebrews 2, 1 to 4. Busa, kinahanglan nga magmainitin kita sa pagkukot sa mga butang na atong hindungkad. Aron na dili kita maano. Busa, kung ang pulong ang isuti pinagi sa mga manulunda at malikon, kung ang talang kalapasan o pagsupak na kadawat o matarong na ganti, kung saan na nato paglikay, kung di kita magtagad sa labihang dako ng kaluwasan, kung nga sa sinugdan, isuti na sa ginoo, kung pinagi sa pagdawa, ipalikon ni atong nakadungo. Huwag ang Diyos usap, kauban, nga nagsaksi pinaagi sa mga ilhanan. Mga katingalahan o mga gamhanang buhat, huwag ang balaang Espiritu Santo, balaang Espiritu pinaagi sa mga hiyas, nagihatag, sumala sa iyang kabubutol. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to be gathered together. To worship you and to study your word. So learn of you, Lord God. Lord, you may speak today. May you give us also wisdom and understanding to understand your word and to live according to your word and the ability and the courage to share the word of truth. Lord, be glorified in our words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Paikini, sa ato itunan, ito may aking Sunday, warning against neglecting salvation. This is a warning. So, ang atong text karon, ang una o ang primero nga warning nga na, sa lima ka mga warning nga naadya sa Hebrews. There are five warnings scattered sa book sa Hebrews. And this is the first one. And this is a warning against neglecting salvation. Neglect. Uh, verse 3. Paglikay o dili pagtagad, dili magtagad. Ang dili pagtagad sa kaluwasan. Neglect is, ano ang word? Making it lightly. Inang wala yung sirisuha. So, the word here, let's notice, ang word na gigamit din is neglect. Verse 3, neglect. It is not reject. Now there's a difference. Tungod kay neglect ang gigamit, this means or this affirms that the intended audience ni ining a text, ni ining a warning, are people who had knowledge about Jesus Christ and His sacrifice on the cross. Tungod kay neglect ang gigamit, Ang intended audience in the warning na kadungog na may ginoong sa Kristo na anay knowledge na nahibawaan na hitungod ka niya o sa Evangelio. And probably they are members of the church already or maybe they have attending church for a while. Ang original audience and possibly po na ito karoon but are still not ready to make a commitment. Not ready to commit their lives to the Lord. Tungod kay neglect ang gigamit, dili reject, kung reject, wag yung sila niini ng knowledge. Tungod kay neglect man, they agree or admit that Jesus Christ is the Savior. Ning agree sila, pero only up to head knowledge. Ang ilang pag agree. In practice, they're not yet really accepting Christ. Christ's sacrifice or they're not yet surrendering their lives to Christ. Tungon kay neglect ang gigamit, 
Nasa may head knowledge, nang agree sila kinsa si Jesus, daghan, daghan mga tao kung ngayon na ilan yan ha? Pero in practice, practically, wala sila magsari sa gibuha ni Kristo. Lahing ang ilang isanggan sa kaluwasan, daghan po nini sa mga Jews, they know, they heard the gospel, nakaila sila ni Gino sa Kristo, and they agree that Jesus is the Messiah, but they keep trusting the sacrifices, they keep trusting the traditions, even today, Daghan yung mga tao sa atong nasa sa Pilipinas, they know who Jesus Christ is. Kadaghan na sila na kadungog, mahitungog ng inong sa Kristo. And yet, wala sila mosalig sa libuhat ni Kristo. Lahit ihapon ang ilang isaligan. And they continue to neglect the salvation offered to Christ solely by Christ. Now, mo nang word na gigamit din ha. Huwag mo ang nga warning para sa mga tao na nakadungo, na takunangan na kaila ni Kristo, pero wak mo hatag silang kinabuhi nga ito ni Kristo. Wala mo commit sa ilang kinabuhi nga ito sa Diyos. Na sa little review, last Sunday, ang unang warning nga ng high warning tungkol kay kininga gospel o kininga mga teachings, unang i-proclaim ni Jesus Christ, the Savior Himself. The Messiah himself proclaimed this salvation. And so first one, ang word na nigamit, Give heed, give more earnest heed. Prosecco. Pay much closer attention. Kung anong sa inaibi. O kanang na word, give heed. It's not just, ang kaya pagingon din ha, sa writer, give heed, give heed. More earnest he. Wala lang siya magingon na direct your attention to this teachings about Christ. Kaya na may therefore no. Napasabot tungod kasi Christ greater than angels tungod sa truth to chapter one. Tagaig ng pagtaga kopti sa pagtarong sa may nito. It's not just direct your attention to that, but also act upon it. Kung unsa ninyo na dunggan, move your will, respond to that. Don't just hear it, respond to it. The same word in Gamit, if you have your Bibles with you, Acts 8.6. I did not project this, Acts 8.6. The word give heed, the same word here, so give earnest heed. Ang sahong. Acts 8.6 And the people with one accord gave heed unto those teachings which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Wala lang mamina kundi ng action sila. Kani nga portion diri. They were moved sa testimony ni Philip. Sa Panahon ni, pagkahaman ni ni Philip, di ba ito sa Philip na ini? With one accord gave heed. And there was great joy in that city to Monkei. They believed. They mixed it with faith. They received it. They did. Wala sila naminaw. Wala sila maghatag ng attention. Ilang hidawa. And then they trusted Christ. Monang there was great joy in that city. So verse 8. Na mo ni nga gave heed. Dili lang kay give attention to it, but also act upon it. And then another word na nangis gutan last Sunday is drift away. Sa King James, slip, slide, slip. It's a word that suggests a gradual departure rather than an abrupt one. Morning ngay morning, kay... Kung di ta magkupot sa atong nadungkan sa mainito ng pagkupot, anaman na mo niya kung layo ang tao, di ka nini ng kamakura, ang to too late na, na makaambo pa siya sa truth. This is a gradual departure. 
mo nang drift away or sleep anong anang siya kalayok na hinoon sa kamaturan tungkol sa iyang pagpadayon na pagniglek wala man magkupot na may niton sigilag ka doon why action so there's a danger of drifting away kalayok na hinoon sa truth So, this is a warning of people who are like in Hebrews 4.2. Kani nga warning para sa mga katawahan na sama sa Hebrews 4.2. Nga nakadungog sa Ebanghelyo, pero wala ma-benefit, maka-benefit sa Ebanghelyo, tungkol kay wala man sa bully o pagtuo. So, you see, these people heard the gospel, but it did not profit them. Because they heard it, because they are not, they did not combine it with faith, not being mixed with faith. So, ang atong text karon na ipapat ka rasa na nung kita gaan ta ang warning. Nasaan din yung kutulo, akong gain draw di mo sa, but only quickly, na itong isgutan. Four warnings against the death and salvation of the first war, a reason, na nung nai warning, na sa nai ang isgutan. Because it was proclaimed by the Lord, then it had to ha, that was verse 1 of verse 3a. Now, verse 2. Ah, verse 3, see it to verse 2. Ang doon sa first portion sa verse 3. Mawani ka ron, because there is a predetermined judgment. Nga nang nai warning against neglect and salvation. Tungod kay Adonai paghukong na muabot. Verse 2, let's read verse 2. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect the great salvation? You see, kung Adonai single punishment Under the law of the Old Testament, some of them did not make escape. Nini new covenant, nini gospel of salvation in Christ. Kung kani ato ni neglect, mali nini ngabut pa sa buti ni verse two to first portion of verse three. There is a judgment coming for those who will neglect and reject. This salvation offered by God through Christ. This tells us about the inevitability of punishment if you neglect. Na agoy expected na punishment kung ang tao magneglect ni ining kaluwasan. If the old covenant, the word spoken through angels. It speaks of the law, the old covenant, the old testament. I mean, if nobody can get away with breaking the old covenant brought by angels, then don't think somebody could get away with breaking the covenant brought by the Lord Himself. Si Jesus mo'y nag-bring sa new covenant, mo'y nag-fulfill o nagdala ni ining bago nga covenant na mao ning kaluwasan o abundang panalangin diha lang ni Kristo. Ang old covenant at ang ibalik balik ko siya mao ning law mapanalangin ang sila sa lahat ng kanan if they will obey the law. That's the old covenant. That's the law. Kung niningon ang Hebrews din ni It's done away with. It's obsolete. The old, because the new has come. Ang new na gidala ni Christ, forgiveness of sins. Here, the writer has in mind two testaments. Sa yung pagsuwat ni in verse two. The one testament was the revelation of the law, na diin gidala, inagi sa mga angel, kawaban sa mga angel. O ang matakusa ng musubak ni ining balauda, Old Testament laws, dahil ining balaod sa Pilipinas ng talo, but the Old Testament laws, any disobedience ni ining mga balaod, 
Magsunod yun ang severe of just punishment. You see? Hindi ka ng record din eh. Panahon galing sa Old Testament na naanggalaod, ang break sa palaod na magaling severe ng punishment o just ng punishment sa month na sa New Covenant, sa New Testament kasi Christ, grace na ang offer Di na command. It's a command to obey the law. Kung baga, kung atong hindi o ni-paraphrase, ang Diyos panahon sa Old Testament ng stricto, obey, and then you will be blessed. Pero sa New Testament, I give you grace. Plus ka na, kung sa iloong ka ka, o kung mag-neglect pa ka ni Ana, mas samot na ang imong punishment na paabotol. So, morning, the other revelation came through Christ. Morning, doha ka, test, doha ka testament ang nasa yung nauna. Kaling words spoken through angels, nag-refer sa Old Testament. Kung how can we escape sa verse 3, how shall we escape to neglect a great salvation, it speaks of the New Testament, the salvation in Christ, na na sa New Testament, na di, di open sa New Testament. Di reveal sa New Testament. Now, because, nga nung mas severe man ang punishment, na by grace naman, because it is through a greater son, you see, ang Old Testament, I mean, ang law, gigipadala, pinaagi sa mga anghel, and the angels are called, called sons of God. They are the mediators of the law, Old Testament law, sons of God. Pero ang new covenant na, ang nagdala na, son of God, is greater. Diyos mismo, di na sons of God, angel, kundi mismo ang son of God na si Kristo na na Diyos mismo. Therefore, tungkol kayo siya, son of God, he is a greater mediator. And therefore, greater ang covenant na ang iyang gidala. Mas, mas better giting ang covenant na iyang gidala. Kaya ang Diyos mismo naman nagdala ni Ini, Son of God naman, and consequently, dala po ni Ini ang equal o greater punishment. Kung severe ang punishment pa naman sa Old Testament law, na ang sons of God or angels may not mediate ni Ini, samot na ang Son of God na si Christ, Diyos mismo, equal with God, mo na'y nagdala ni Ini, New Covenant of Grace. Some of them greater punishment. And still this punishment is just. No one is going to escape from the punishment of the New Covenant. If in fact, no man ever escapes the punishment of breaking the Old Covenant. Because the New Covenant is greater than the Old Covenant. As you go back to the Old Testament, you find that any transgression sa Old Testament, it says verse 2. You see? Verse 2. Every transgression and disobedience. All. Everyone. You get that? There's no escape from the law, from the Old Covenant. Likewise, wala po escape sa New Covenant. Morning naghatag a warning. Ang writer sa Hebrews, tungon kay wa kay nakaipsot sa balaod sa Old Covenant, samot na huwag makaipsot. Kung ang tao mo reject pa, meaning New Covenant. And that's simple, oh, sa New Covenant. Ang New Covenant, di ka pinahanglan mag-follow o naghan kayong law sa Old Covenant. 600 kapi ng law sa ilang sundon. But in the New Covenant, brought by Christ, only one. Believe on Jesus Christ and receive Him as your Lord. That's the only law. And that secures to you the new covenant and the freedom from punishment. Maula ng paagi nga makalinkawasta ni ining punishment. Believing on Jesus Christ as your Lord. You see Romans 8.1. Just read it in your, in your seats there. There is therefore now no condemnation 
to those who are in Christ Jesus. Wala na punishment, wala na yung paghukong, ni atong naanadiha ni Kristo. So, ang naanadiha ni Kristo, wala na yung paghukong, makalikawas, makalikawas na hinihing paghukong. That's the only way. Let's uh, dig this a little bit deeper, word by word. Angels, word by the angels. Word, for the word spoken by angels. Na naman na ang old common of the gang law, hindi ingon man hindi na spoken by angels. Now, kanyang word na if, first, if, it's not an if, or if, dili na if, kung si man pa kung, or a conditional. It's it's a sense or view of the fact. It's a fulfilled condition in Greek. Mona kan Dr. Isidro, busa ang iyang translation din ng ilik kong. It's a fulfilled condition. Yung pasabot, lik kong yun ang word na spoken by angels. Lik kong o tinuon o klaro. The word spoken by angels. Now, Ang Old Testament commandments, particularly ang Ten Commandments, were connected by angels. Kung ang mga Hebrews, mga Jews, taas nagpagtagal sa angel, man ang unang, ang writer, unang niyang itudlo na si Christ was greater for its angels. At ang Miss Gotham is just a few verses with regards to this. Nga nung ang Old Testament brought by angels, Psalm 67, the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Now, di man kukuha ni Moses ng Ten Commandments ang law. Nung sa nga Mount, Mount Sinai, Mount is here a verse. This verse says, the Lord is in Mount Sinai with 20,000, even thousands of angels. So, klaro kayo na kaupan ang mga angel dito sa Mount Sinai pag receive ni Moses sa Ten Commandments. Na yung mas klaro na verse, Deuteronomy 33, 2. This is Moses, the Moses na kinganini. The Lord came from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran and he came with ten thousands of saints. The Lord came with ten thousands of saints. It speaks of angels. From his right hand came a fiery love for them. This is an indication that angels were involved sa pagdala sa balaod. Pagdala sa balaod, particularly the Ten Commandments, na involved kining angels. Even a New Testament, sa Acts chapter 7, now verse 53, speaking of the Stephen, Yafon, I don't know, I forget. Now, who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it? Uh, speaking to the Israelites, they received the law by the direction of angels and the Israelites have not kept it. So, see, klaro kayo, by the direction of angels, ang law, involved ang mga angel sa pagdala, and these angels were in Sinai, pagdawat ni Moses sa Ten Commandments, they were instrumental sa pagdala sa balaon. Mga ng Hebrews, ningingon nga, spoken by angels. If the word spoken through angels, it speaks of the law. Kung kini nga law, malipon, o kang tanang pagsupa ni ini nga law, na ay kaagba na silo, samot na. Ang verse is samot na sa new covenant in Christ. Every transgression, It means that if you break the law, there's a punishment. 
If a person committed adultery, they will stone him. That's the punishment. Tagan kayo ng examples niya na sa Old Testament. The law is did you ma break? It was sure. It was certain. Now every transgression. Let's talk about this. And disobedience. Now, I do have a class in Salah to recover the meaning na two words, transgression and disobedience. Declaro din sa writer na wag yung mga episode sa silo. Now, the word transgression, parabis, it means to step across the line. Transgression, ang pasabot, willful ni mong gibuhat ang sayo. Nagbuhat ka ng Salah. Monay transgression, a sin of commission. Monay another word for that. Active, the sin that is active, the sin of commission. And the other word, disobedience. It's a different word. Oh, originally meaning it means imperfect hearing, hearing amiss. What ayon madungi like sa kaning bungo ng tao. This book was about deliberate shutting of ears to the commands, warnings, or invitations of God. It was about, Nay disugong yun ang abuhaton, pero wala abuhata. You see, so ang transgression, will fall ni mong gipuha, ang sayo, and then ang disobedience, Nay sugong, wala ni mong buhata. Morning sin of omission. Neglect or the sin of omission. So these two kinds of sin, what you do and what you don't do, the cover meaning to have words. So panahon sa Old Testament, every transgression, every breaking of the law by doing, and every breaking of the law by not doing. Example, wala mo keep sa sabat. There's nine. Si Lomiana, o ang uh, nagtrabaho pa na sa Sabah, na ako yung si Lomiana. So, morning ko sa Bumini, transgression and disobedience. Every, all rule breakers, tanang, dis, tanang sa laon, batok sa balaon, sa law of the Old Testament, na yung equal na punishment, just punishment. So, the punishment in the Old Testament is very severe. Let's take an example of Sena. Let's take a family of Nini. Just one example. We'll give Numbers 15, 32-36. So, it's a severe punishment. Now, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath. Nay na kahoy, nanguhag kahoy, panahon sa Sabbath. And those who found him, gathering sticks, brought him to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation. They put him under guard because it had not been explained what should be done to him. The Lord said to Moses, the man must surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. You see? So as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones and he died. Kung sarang kasimpo lang yung dibuhat, panahon sa Saba, holy day sa mga Jews, namunit lang ang kahoy, kung sa'y silo, death penalty by stoning. Kung sa kasibir, only, para na ito, simple disobedience. But this is breaking God's law. Defying the law of God. Huwag mo ko na naagoy just punishment. Mo ko na yung sinibros every transgression and disobedience. Receive a just recompense. Mo na yung King James Version. Now, how much mo? Iklaro lang yun. Iklaro sa writer's libros. Para ka na po, para sa original audience. 
Pag neglect pag itang tao padayon, nining kaluwasan at ihatag ni Kristo, sigurado yun ang silot. Sigurado ang silot. O kang silot sa Diyos is just. God's justice is righteous. Right. Now the word just. Just recompense of reward. The word just. Kaya daghan may mo reklamo sa Diyos nga gugma man ang Diyos. Ang silot is niya. Makandang niya sa Diyo. Well, God is also just. Maling ang word niya. People like to accuse God of not being just, but God is just. Ang Diyos di kin magbuhat of something na unjust. Sa tanan niyang punishment, tanan niyang ipanghibo, was a deterrent to the sin. Was deterrent to sin o na iyang gusto stop. He only punished those that were already determined to abide without him. Iya lang panisyan katong sigurado na yung mag-defy niya, katong din na magpabili niya. Aron makip pure ang mga tao sa Diyos. Maraming ni Boss Israel, to keep the Israelites pure, morning severe ang punishments. Para ang Israelites magpabili niya sa Diyos, o magpabili niya di masagula sa traditions of paganism around them, na ay punishment di handa ng Diyos. Now, God is always just. O ang punishment sa Diyos lang to sa Israel, si Peter, tungod kay nasayod man sila kinsa ang Diyos kung sa'y kabubutkon sa Diyos. Maling ang principle sa sa just sa Diyos, sa justice sa Diyos. Kung mas dagahan ka na himawaan, mas mas grabe po ang imong punishment. Monica principal. Let's read a few verses. Just Matthew. Matthew 11, 20-24. Nga nung severe man. Okay. The more you know, the greater your punishment, the severe your punishment, the more knowledge you have about the truth, the more severe your punishment. Now, Matthew 11, 20-24, Then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Si Jesus, yang gerebyok ang katong mga lugar na wala mag-repent, din siya naghimog dagang milagro. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works were, which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Verse 22, But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. You see? Kung ang mga milagro gihimo ni Jesus, gihimo pa dito Sodom, ang Sodom mag-repent taong ta. Pero ang Kapirnaong wala gid mag-repent bisan pa sa mga milagro gihimo ni Jesus. Verse 24, But I say to you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. You see? They have greater knowledge about the Messiah, or kung ati ang Messiah mismo, naghimog milagro silang lugar, ang Messiah mismo nag-prove nga siya ang manuluwas. Pag niningaw si Christ sa verse 24, mas grabe inyong silot kay naghimog ang milagro silang tubangan na ako mismo, nag-preach ko ninyo, dahil naghimog ang milagro ninyo, you have more knowledge than Sodom. Sodom na sa'y knowledge sa law. Pero mas grabe ang inyong knowledge kay ang Messiah na mismo naging mong milagro. Pero mas tolerable pa ang Sodom sa punishment kaysa punishment ninyo. You see? The more knowledge you have about the truth, the more you know about Christ as still like Christ, the greater punishment. 
Morning, my friends, you call it. Sodom and Gomorrah, they know the, the law, but they, were, they neglected the law. Nagpadayon sila sa ilang kinabuhi, na laway. Sama sa tayo at si Don. Pero di yung sama sa Capernaum, the side of Jorazin, na ang Messiah naging mag-ministry, ang Messiah nag-preach the gospel, then walang mag-preach the gospel, naging mag-milagro to prove that He is from God, that God is with Jesus. Yet, these cities did not repent. Eh? Did not repent. Maunang mas greater ang ilang punishment kaysa ni Ining Tari ng Sidon and Sodom. So, kay Babo Punta, na-mention na ako before, even sa hell, may lain mo degree of punishment. Uh, pinakainit, maani, to those who rejected the most knowledge. Let's read a few verse. Just passage. Luke 12, 47. The 48 in verses. And that servant, this is Jesus speaking. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will. A master in Lakao, Maling na passage din niya, upos niya itong ibasa niya. Ang lakaw niya, the servant knew his master's will and did not prepare himself. Kibaw sila na mabalik lang master kay ng lakaw man. Kibaw sila na mabalik, ng specs na mabalik. Niya karon ay servant sa verse 47 na nakahibaw sa kabubuton sa ilang master but did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. Verse 48 But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of strife. Niya itong wala masayon o niya wag ihapon magbuhat sa kabubuton sa master Pero wala sila masayod na mo din yung kabubutong sa master shall be beaten with few. See the principle? Na ay servant na kahibaw kung sa'y will sa master kung wala buhata 1 of verse 47 may his stripes. Na ay servant wala kahib, verse 48 wala kahibaw sa will sa master kung niya ang yan yung buha sumpak sa will sa master Few on stripes shall be in the few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. So you get that? He's talking about judgment. There. Nine. Mga tao, nga nasayon. But then still, wala mabuha sa kabubuton, sa insakto, many strikes, mas severe ang punishment. Kaysa wak masayang sa gospel, and then, of course, wak masayang sa gospel, nag-neglect sa gospel, naagihap ko yung punishment, pero di pareha sa nasayang. The point is simple. Kung ang noong nagidala sa angels, na ay severe judgment, how much severe judgment mo about na itong nag-neglect sa new covenant in Christ who willfully, some of them who willfully rejected. Morning, sa Hebrews di ako ng writer, nangingon siya, Hebrews 10, 28-29, Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two to three witnesses. And in reject sa balawa ni Moses, na matay ng walay mercy. Verse 29. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? You see? Kato mag-insulto sa gracia. Nakasabot nga si Kristo ang Messiah, is the sacrifice, gireject mo na yung pag-insult ni Ana. How much more severe punishment, worse punishment, dingo niya sa verse 29, Hebrews 10. So it's clear, just ang punishment sa gino. Kung sa Old Testament na severe punishment, pag-supak sa balaod, 
Samot na sa inyong covenant. Just kihapon, mas severe, tungod kay 2,000 years na nilabay, padayon ng preach ang gospel, ipadayon ng preach si Kristo sa kalimutan, daghan ang nakatungog, daghan yakon ang nag-neglect, daghan ang nag-reject. So how can man escape judgment if he rejects the new covenant of Christ? The answer is he can't escape. No one can escape judgment. There is no way to escape if people neglect so great salvation. Third point, Tanumai warning. Just quickly, we're almost done. Verse 3, see? How shall we escape if we neglect judgment? Neglect so great salvation, which at first began to look unto the Lord, and was confirmed to us by those who hear him. Now, this gospel was also professed by the apostles. Is dili lang tungod by two or three witnesses. Dili lang si Christ ang nagproclaim sa gospel. It was confirmed. The apostles professed it also. You see, those who was confirmed to us by those who heard him, those who heard Christ. Si Christ ang unang nagproclaim sa gospel, and then he confirmed. Huwag nang profess po ang kadyong mga tao na nakadungog ni Christ o kinsa man yung nakadungog ni Christ. Morning mga apostles. Na, sa panahon nga buhay si Kristo, naa sila nakakita o nakadungog ni Kristo sa preaching ni Kristo. Sa tutlo ni Kristo, sa truth na gindala ni Christ. The apostles also confirmed it, professed it, the truth. Morning na tayo New Testament, the apostles written. Nagmoy nagsuwat ni ning New Testament ang mga padayon, mga pahibaw sa kalikutan, ang kamaguran ng itong ni Kristo sa kaluwasan. Mauna na ay warning, mas higher warning, because it is confirmed by two or three witnesses proclaimed by Christ, professed by apostles. They who heard him preach, they were ear witnesses. Not just eyewitnesses, but ear witnesses. They certify its truth. One in word enough, confirm to us by those who heard him. They confirm. Pag ingat ka confirm, di pa matuta nila kung di itudlo ni Kristo sa ko tinonyon according to scriptures. Ilang di profess, ilang di confirm ng di itudlo sa Old Testament kinsa ang Messiah, o kung sa'yo buhatos Messiah, gikonfirm sa mga apostles na maagin ni si Christ, maagin ni ang Messiah. Morning na yung severe warning. Kaya nag-profess at nag-confirm ang mga apostles. Mahitong mo ni Christo, mahitong mo din yung Evangelio. They proved to be real by the testimony of ear witnesses. The Lord preached it first, it was confirmed to us by them that heard him. They were second generation in terms of hearing the message. Now, lastly, it was proved by God. Fourth point. The gospel was proclaimed by Christ. Then, because of the predetermined judgment, na I warning, because of the professed by the apostles, one and one, he confirmed by two or three witnesses. Now, it's proved by God. Ang Diyos po nag-confirm sa truth sa gitudlo ni Kristo. Verse 4. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His word. Ano na ay severe warning? Ano naghatag warning? Ang writer sa Hebrews, tungod kay mismo ang Diyos, nag-witness na tinuod ang ipamulong ni Kristo nga si Kristo gikan sa Diyos gipadala sa Diyos o ang pag-witness sa Diyos ang iyang pag-confirm by signs and wonders miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit so you see the Holy Trinity is implied implied there so the gospel of Jesus Christ kung inigdek sa tao is very dangerous that's why we are here given a warning. First of all, it was proclaimed by Christ. Secondly, there is a determined judgment. Thirdly, 
It was professed by the apostles. And lastly, it was proven by God. Kung sa dihang si Kristo nagwali, panahon na hindi Kristo kalimutan, na ang usay sa ipanghimo para mahimong believable ang iyang preaching. Kung kung sa mga iyang himo, mga niyong mga milagro. O kung naapay nagduda niya, mga niyang hingon sa mga nagduda sa iyang preach. John 14.11, let's be quick with it. Believe me that I am I am in the Father, the Father in me. Or kung di pang kamu believe nga ako di asama, ano nga mananakan ako, else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Kung di pang kamu kadawat sa akong ipamulong, nga ako di asama, ano nga mananakan ako, ang hindi mo nakita nga akong ipamuhat, kanaan nga ito uhin. Nga ako di ka, kung kung sa may works, hindi ka rin ni Christ. It's the mighty works. The miracles na ibuhat ni Christ. Mao niyang giingon na itong nagduda pa niya. No, wala ang makadawag siya ang i-preach na truth na siya ang Misaya. Tungon kaya naghimo siya ang bilagro, mao lang aangay siya ang tuhan. Kung di ba sila katuo, sa iya ang ipang dodo. So you see, si Jesus, sa kaupan siyang pag-preach, naghimo po siya ang mga milagro. And the miracles was for confirming His word. He claimed to be from God. Si Jesus then claimed from God and then he did things that made it obvious he was from God. Example, si Nicodemus. Claro sa mga Israelites na kung ang tao maghimog milagro, di ka kinang sa Diyos. Kung wala'y makahimog milagro, kung kanang tawa na di ka sa Diyos. Nicodemus, John chapter 3, verse 2. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one do these signs that you do unless God is with you. You see? It was clear to the Israelites and to the Jewish leaders. Yeah. Ang tao nga magbuhat ng iling mga milagro, gikan yun sa Diyos. Ang purpose sa milagro was to confirm that this man is from God. Pagmanan si Christ, kaoban siyang pag-preach, naging mong pumilagro para mag-confirm na tinuot, pagpakita sa tao, a sign to those people, nga si ang iyong mga ipangtudlo, gikan yun sa Diyos. Miracles, let's talk about miracles this week. So, ang ministry ni Christ is confirmed by miracles. Huwag si Peter sa Acts 2, 22. Sa Acts 2, si Christ, ang taon na nga dito sa langit, ang balik na sa langit. Now, this is the day of Pentecost. This is the sermon of Peter. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles. You see? Christ attested by God the Paluyohan sa Diyos pinaagi sa milagro wonders and signs which God did through him in your face as you yourselves also know so you see Jesus was approved his word was confirmed by signs and wonders and miracles so panahon sa mga apostles mga pag kinigigamit sa Diyos na ma-prove na ang ilang teaching higikan sa Diyos because the, the Bible was not yet complete so ang Diyos naghimog paagi na makasabot ang tao na ang gipreach ng mga apostles because they were preaching about the new covenant, the Messiah na dili kayo klaro sa Old Testament na ang mas tinaw na diha ni Kristo na ang New Testament wala pa man maswa so ang sa may proof nila na kini ilang gipreach na truth na Messiah Gikan sa Diyos. So, ang ilang preaching, giyo ba na ang milagro? Confirmed by signs. God, mo ay nag-witness ka nila, nag-bear witness, by giving the ability to do sa mga butang na sa mga ibuat ni Jesus, signs and wonders and miracles. Mga apostles, like, see, 
Peter, Sir Michael Ravenland, yang gihil. Lagang sila gihiling, gihiling ministry, para sa ilang uh, ministry. And this miracles was to confirm their preaching, the truth, the word, ngayon lang gipreach. Ang miracles, di kay maoy end or maoy ilang focus ng priority, kundi ang truth may ilang priority of to prove that they're speaking the truth, nagigan sila sa Diyos, kung ang truth ngayon lang gidalagigan sa Diyos, morning na yung lock growth. Now, o kini yung lock growth, utob lang sa mga apostles. At this and more, na hindi pa sa verse 4. Welcome back to it. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, not just signs and wonders, miracles, but also gifts of the Holy Spirit. They are spiritual gifts. Not only signs, not only miracles. And let's take note, ang tumoy, according to his own will. Gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to whose will? God's will. Naghatag, God mo'y nag-bear witness, pinagig milagro, o give sa Holy Spirit, according to God's will, not according to man's will. Now, these spiritual gifts, dagkahan maninas, 1 Corinthians 12, next Romans 12, next Romans 12, ang lista, but particularly ang gerefer ni Ini, morning mga miraculous gifts. For the sake of confirmation, ang gerefer ni Ini ni Hebrews 2.4, ang mga milagros ng mga gasa. So, there are four of these gifts, I believe. Uh, gifts of healing, gifts of miracles, gifts of tongues, and gifts of interpretation of tongues. Mone mga special confirming gifts to prove to people na ilang gi-preach gikan sa Diyos. Now, these gifts, we believe, as conservative evangelical, kutob lang yan ng apostolic era. O wala na yung need na yung mga gifts today. Kaya wala na may need pag confirm sa word. It's already confirmed. Kung na yung maingon, maoni ang giingon sa Diyos. Mangita ko ba tayong milagro? Kung na ay mag-preach, maoni ang giingon sa Diyos kung sa mga itong buhaton. At ang i-confirm sa Bible, kung naapa sa Bible, kung na-preach yung mga morning dingon sa Diyos. Kung wala sa Bible, dili na tinood. Dili na kinahangal ang milagro karoon. Well, take verses to begin with this. Last na lang eh. Nga nung wala na karoon, meaning miracles, healings, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Okay, sa una, wala ko makakomplete ang New Testament. Kinangla nila i-prove kung Diyos na bear witness nila at inuod sila ang apostles ilang preaching through tungod din ni miraculous gifts, gifts of the Holy Spirit. And again, I will reiterate, according to His own will, ang tao di mag-tanks according sa iyang kawagalingon. According to God's will, magka-tanks. Panahon pa kaya ni nila. So, mga tao pa. We'll give verses ngayon wala na karo. But first, let's go to B.B. Warfield, great scholar of Bible. These miraculous gifts were part of the credentials of the apostles. Partly sa requirements, credential sa mga apostoles. To prove that they are authoritative agents of God in founding the church. Their function does confine them to distinctively the apostolic church. And they necessarily pass away with it. And functions the gifts of the miracles. Confined land sa apostolic church. Sa ilang office of apostles. Kung tumot kayo wala na may apostles today, these gifts also pass away with it. Now, proof text. 1 Corinthians 14.22 Now, this is not... Uh, Detail view. One day we will talk about this in detail, but this is just a quick, we're almost done here. 
First Corinthians 14.22 Therefore, tongues are for a sign not to those who believe. Diyan sa tapo to. Ang tongues is a sign dealing para sa magtutuo. Ang purpose of tongues para ang dealing magtutuo masayod nga ang preach sa mga apostles gikan sa Diyos nga mutuo kadong makadungog nga dealing magtutuo. You see, it's very clear. Not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. Now, kung may mag-tongues, dili na sakto ang purpose. Kaya ang tongues, para man sa unbelievers, na mabot sa point, na mutuoy, tinuod ay nakikigan sa Diyos kini. Kung ang tongues, gaya for their known language. Ang speaker, wala kasabot, niyan ang language, for next picture, niyan ang language. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Prophesying is speaking the word of God, the revealed word, for believers. So, mga nang wala na karoon ng tongues, kay para manas ang believers. And then, dagan tayong mga text. Complete naman. Uh, ang Bible, the last one. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. 1 Corinthians 12, the chapter 12, it talks about spiritual gifts. Unya, name si Paul, next one of 1 Corinthians 13. Bisan pa ni ining spiritual gifts of chapter 12. Mas greater good ni mula. 1 Corinthians, klaro kayo na mula, the law of chapter. Then in verse 8, 1 Corinthians 13, 8, mas greater ang love kaysa ni ining miraculous spiritual gifts. Because love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, prophecies are speaking the future, they will fail. Mga po tang po yun na maundang na. Mga na walang nakaroon na project sa future. Ang kanin, weather, kwa na mo siya forecast. Kaya na projection. Uh, according to model, forecast lang yung prediction. In order to make book, forecast lang na basic money to make book. So, one of us. So, prophecies, mabutang point na maundang na. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. You see? Nine tongues pa na nila. But, mabutang time na maundang ang tongues. Whether there is knowledge. So, okay, kung nagtunog di pa rin, kung nang knowledge ba, na yung paningon nga interpretation of tongues is siya, it will vanish away. You see? Ang tongues will cease. These miraculous spiritual gifts will cease. Will vanish away. Naay tayo nang vanish away. Kita, atong gituuhan na kutubra sa apostolic age. Pagkahorot na sa apostles, yung balik is na sa wala na po din tongues, wala na itong miraculous gifts healing, the gifts of healing, the interpretation of tongues, wala na, kay complete na mga Bible. Magkasi naman ta sa mirror of clarity, this is 1 Corinthians 13, ito ba sa, so, these spiritual gifts, according to God's will, nabot ang time, na may sisi sila, sisi sila, tungod kay, they were used by God to confirm the preacher's message that it was the truth. Now, the Bible is complete. We have the word. So, in conclusion, in the test pass down, four reasons na nung itagaan ang warning, may tungod sa pag-neglect or being careless or taking lightly, kalawasan ng law for the Christo, Una, kung wag kikinig kaluwasan, kung proclaim ni Christ. Kaduha, kung wag kinahay, predetermined judgment, na mga po, na wag kinahay mga ka-exod. Katulo, i-profess ni sa mga apostles. The apostles confirmed that what Christ preached is true. And then, it was proven by God. Wala na severe din ang judgment. Kung mali ng hatag sa warning, may naay mali ng lessons. Therefore, there is no other Savior, only Jesus Christ. There is no other sacrifice that can wash away our sins, 
Only the blood of Jesus. It's time for us to receive the Lord. So, Father, thank you so much for your word today. This is my meal. So, God, in the name of the Lord, may you give us the understanding to remember your word, to understand your word, and the willingness to share your word. Help us to preach Christ. And may Christ be known in our lives and through our lives. Good Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.